Happy Monday, all you mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. And join me today for an advanced look at the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. This is the latest printing from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. Before getting started, I'm going to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on July 19th. However, the direct market exclusive cover is only available on July 26th. That's the date that it's going to start being available, and that is the cover we're looking at here. Uh, this classic piece by Jack Kirby. So this is the one that's going to be available on July 26th. Here on the left-hand side is my original printing, and that's what they're still going to use for the standard edition cover, this piece by Alex Ross. Now, big disclaimer, that's my first printing. I got that omnibus the first day it came out, so it is significantly bigger. Not as big as the second printing. The second printing of this omnibus was thicker than this book right here, which is crazy. Uh, but yes, this is the first printing. Uh, when it originally came out and down i went that rabbit hole that was oh, i'll get something else other than x-men i'll just get spider-man oh how foolish was i uh but here is what the spines of the book look like like i said this is the first printing so this is the new spine design including the picture the smaller font the smaller font on the creators and volume one down there now the other crazy thing when taking a closer look at the spines is that this original printing has 1,088 pages. This one here has 1,152 pages. So what are those extra pages? All right, well, I'm sure I'll find out when we look at it together. The back of the book also, the design has been different. They changed it. Uh, they've been using this type of design for the last three printings. I, I believe this is the fourth or fifth printing of this title. Um, but even the designs here, like the pictures are bigger of the actual uh, comic covers there. The ISBN has now moved all the way to the right. And this right here in the early 60s has been moved down there. It's just a blur by Sam Raimi, director of the Spider-Man movies, the trilogy, and Doctor Strange Mom. And then what it collects is moved down there. Now, of course, the other big difference is the price. The, the first printing was $99.99, but that was well over a decade ago when this came out. Uh, this latest printing is $125. So, actually, let's look at it under the dust jackets. Because underneath the dust jackets, you have the old design, which is kind of follows that Marvel Masterworks look. And this right here is the newer design. So with the picture down there, which I assume this is going to be the picture on the spine of the standard edition cover, and then the Spider-Man logo there on the back. Um, again, let me let me just do this, because I don't hardly ever do this, but keep in mind that this is the newer printing here over a decade ago they printed this one here. But I did just want to show you the differences in those page blocks. Uh, this one printed in the U.S., and this one is now printed in Turkey, the iMac printer. So let's crack this one open. Uh, we'll do a comparison uh, here in a little bit. But let's crack this one open, talk a little bit about the stories in here, and show off this beautiful artwork by Steve Ditko. So let's crack it open. So we have these black end paper there. The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus, Volume 1, what it collects. And here are all the credits and pretty much the writers, uh, the plotter. I love that they give Steve Ditko plot credit as well as the artist, the penciler. I wonder if they're going to start doing that more and more. Letters at the time, the colorist, unfortunately, weren't uncredited. Sometimes it was Ditko, sometimes who knows. Um, the collection cover, Alex Ross, and then the variant cover that you saw here by Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko. And... All the restoration there, the table of contents right here where it all began, including the introduction by Stan the Man Lee. Now, these introductions are always borrowed from the Marvel Masterworks. So the Marvel Masterworks line started in 1987 with Amazing Spider-Man. That's where this introduction came from. 
And then we kick it off with the book that started it all. Well, Fantastic Four was probably the book that started the movement of the Silver Age, the Marvel Age comics. This book right here, and I don't mean Silver Age across the board, of course. I just meant like that Marvel Age of... But it was the Silver Age at the time, um, of superheroes. This is the book that just cemented that superheroes were not going to go away because everybody wanted this book. I always think of my uh, father-in-law, the Astonishing Melanie's dad, when I talk about Amazing Fantasy 15 or Amazing Spider-Man number one because uh, they used to trade comics back then and he said that he, he could never find an Amazing 15. He had to go to the next town. They had to bike over to the next town. He always loved telling me stories like this uh, because the pharmacy, wherever he got him, his comics from didn't carry it. They had Amazing 1 and Amazing 2, but they could never find his first appearance of Amazing 15. So he had to trade like a stack of Flash comics for it. So, yeah, I always uh, thought that was such a sweet story. But, and that's my wife's favorite character is the Amazing Spider-Man. But here we have the Amazing Spider-Man, issue number one. So what's collected in here? Well, you saw at the very front here, it states that it collects Amazing Fantasy 15, where it all began. Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 38, Annuals 1 and 2, Fantastic Four Annual number 1, and Strange Tales Annual number 2. So, yes, all... Here, let's move on a little bit. All of the classic Steve Ditko and Stan Lee era of Spider-Man is in here. To think about just the amount of love and work that went into this book. Now... It's always a big division between people like what was the better book, right? Fantastic Four by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee or Spider-Man by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. I think there's still a lot of stories in here. And it's hard, right? Because it's not also not fair because Jack Kirby and Stan Lee's run well went over the run that Steve Ditko and Stan Lee had with this uh, particular title. So I think... To me, at least, in my opinion, that it's Amazing Spider-Man. There's just so many characters. Like, his villains. Like, all the villains that you probably know of because of the movies, with the exception of Venom, but... Okay, or Carnage. But, you know, the classic villains. Dr. Octopus, Electro, Kraven the Hunter, the Green Goblin, Mysterio. I mean, all these characters that were appearing. Sandman, just in the first few issues. They were just creating characters left and right. The Scorpion, and then, of course, you know, his supporting cast of Betty Brant, the Lizard, J. Jonah Jameson, and actually, J. Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson's son appears in the first issue, uh, Flash Thompson, all these characters that you're familiar with, his supporting cast, and Aunt May, the, you know, the villains, like, they all come from this book, like, the first 38 issues of Amazing Spider-Man, they created so many characters, it's insane, and a lot of those characters kept coming back. So they became popular enough characters, you know, that were embedded into people's heads. His origin story, like, just, there was so much in here. And, like I said, Fantastic Four is phenomenal. I mean, there's nothing like the Galactus Saga. But, like, if this be my destiny, to me, is still one of the best Spider-Man stories ever. Not just the best for its time, not the best Stan Lee and Steve Ditko story, but one of the very best stories. Okay, then there were some goofy things like <laughs> the jo Jonah Jameson robot, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and yes, there is going to be some ridiculousness in here. But I, I love that doing family reviews uh, when my daughters and I went over the the first volume. That was a lot of fun. And yeah, I mean, if this the letter pages are all in here. They're all intact. Yes, right here. One of the greatest moments in Spider-Man history. So much so that they used it in the movies, not just once, but twice in two different Spider-Man movies. It's a great freaking story. Oh, yes, this right here. And this issue right here also serves as the introduction of a couple of supporting cast members that I always felt like were part of Peter's life since the very beginning. And that is Harry Osborn and Gwen Stacy. They don't appear until issue 31. And, hell, Norman... Well, I don't know. Uh, people may not know the identity of the Green Goblin, so never mind. Uh, I hate to spoil that for anybody and then get yelled at in the comments section. 
You spoil the story over 40 years old. Oh, actually, no, this is like over 60 years old. Good lord, 60 years? <sighs> Molten Man. But anyway, these are the kind of characters you're going to find in here. This is the type of artwork you're going to find in here. All of it collected. And just having that beautiful restoration that they use for the Marvel Masterworks. And speaking of Marvel Masterworks, all the introductions are in here. All of the essays by Stan Lee, John B. Cook, Blake Bell, Arlen Schumer, they're all in here. There's the unused... Let me see if I can find the unused artwork by Steve Ditko for the cover that later on they went to use for the uh, Superior Spider-Man right here. Yeah, so I guess it wasn't that dynamic enough, so Stanley decided to get Jack Kirby to do it. And here is a early 1960s Spider-Man promotional pinup right there. All the house ads, all the unused covers. This is the way that Doc Ock looked before... Some changes were made. Original artwork. There's so much of it here. This is so cool. Yeah, so if this is a book that's missing from your collection, I, of course I'm being a little biased because this is where it all began. And while some of the dialogue and some of the plot, of course, is going to be outdated, I think, you know, my daughters still enjoy it. Like, they read it, these particular stories when they were 12 and 9 years old and loved them. We have a... A lot of fun talking about them. Like, they, they read Volume 2. We never did review Volume 2. Maybe we'll review Volume 3 because we're still working on our Captain America. Summer, man. Kids just want to go and hang out with friends instead of hang out with their dad and talk about comic books. All right, so here are the Marvel Tales, which are the covers to pretty much what Marvel started doing was reprinting their books. So long before Marvel Masterworks, long before Epic Collections and uh, Omnis, there was the reprints in single issues. They're just bigger books that reprinted sometimes two or three stories. Speaking of Marvel Masterworks, when the trade paperbacks came out of the Marvel Masterworks, they uh, gave them a like a painted cover. So it was like Steve Ditko, and then you had Dean White's paints on top of it. Pretty cool. I don't, I don't know how the people that collected Marvel Masterworks felt about that. This is the Epic Collection covers back here. And they even threw in the Mighty Marvel Masterworks, which has not appeared in the past. So this is the first time you're seeing these in here. And I believe these weren't in previous collections either. These covers to the Epic Collections. Uh, these are new. And then, of course, if you don't have the Standard Edition cover, here's what it looks like. It's that Alex Ross piece. The black end paper. And... Let's take a look at this eye. 1152 pages. That's a damn big eye. Very good. All right. I like that. Bigger the better. Well, you don't want it too big. Then it gets kind of ridiculous. And then you might have issues with the actual spine. Uh, as far as the way the book lays over, we'll look at that before we look at the comparison. Um, there weren't really any spread pages, but this is the way the book lays over. You have a little bit of a gutter curve. And then towards the middle, Chameleon! And, of course, the burglar who comes... Well, never mind. And then the way it lays over towards the back. Now, let's do a quick comparison to to the first printing here. This book, again, was printed back in 2007, I want to say. Uh, one of the main things that I actually appreciate they started doing was... Yeah, like I said, the, they gave Stiff Ditko a plotter credit. That's pretty cool because... Before this, it was artist and co-plotter, Steve Ditko. So all under one credit. So that's pretty cool that they did that. And everything else seems to be about the same. Um, at least they <laughs> acknowledge that the colorist is uncredited. They don't even talk about the colorist in the original printing. Now again, keep in mind that this is the first printing. I don't have the other printings in between this one and the latest printing to compare the books to. So I don't know if... This is the first time you're seeing this. Um, but with the original printing, they stopped at where you can find issue 38 of Amazing Spider-Man, which is in the same page that you can find it here, in page 1043. Uh, we do have an extra image, though, in the new printing. And then we get into... I don't know why they decided to change this, because you still have two pages. But Stanley's introduction, it's the font is bigger, 
in the original printing than in the new printing. I'm sure I'm going to hear about it. Well, the, 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 the spines are also smaller. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know why they decided to do that because you have the exact same amount of space in between uh, the introduction. You have two pages is what they used in the past and two pages here. Let's take a look at what this looks like here. It seems like the colors are a little bit duller on the new printing right here for Spider-Man's costume where here they are just blue and vibrant. Not just... The color's different there, but also on... The, now, it could be that they're using the new Masters, too, from the Masterworks. So it's truer to the original colors instead of the touched-up colors. Because sometimes people complain about the touch-up colors are just way too colorful and nothing like the original colors. So it could be that they are just using the new Masters from the Masterworks line. Um, over here on the right-hand side... I don't really see a difference. As a matter of fact, this looks a lot more vibrant in the new printing. Just comparing a few more pages here. Seems like Peter's skin color is a little bit darker here. As a matter of fact, all of uh, the panels seem to be just a little bit darker than they are in this printing here. Sorry, I do keep switching sides. Normally I have new printing, old printing, and I keep it labeled up there. But this time around I'm going to be flipping because... so. It looks like they are using new masters just by looking at this particular face here on the vulture. It's a little more muddled over here. And like I said, in the past, I've always stated, like, you have to have a keen eye for these things. Most people are not even going to notice, like, just the subtle changes. But even the colors are a little bit different in the newer printing than they are over here. They seem a little bit darker. And in the newer printing, the lines are a little bit more defined, too. Um, so, yeah, if you have the Marvel Masterworks, I'd love to know if that's what they're using here. And just a couple more comparisons. And you have your new printing over here and the original printing here on the right-hand side with the colors looking darker than over here in the new printing. All right, now let's do a comparison in the way that the books lay over. All right, I know that I will keep this the same. So old printing up there, or original printing rather, and new printing down here. I'm mainly showcasing how the books lay over uh, the original printing because of the paper stock they use, which is a lot thicker than the paper stock they're using these days. And it just they were still new to the game, so they were trying to figure out how to make a good, big, bound book. Uh, this seemed to be a problem with the early releases. They keep wanting to shut on you, and believe me, I've read this at least four times and my wife once or twice. Uh, whereas the new printings, they figured out how the book lays over. Now, the big other difference, of course, that I mentioned is the paper stock. This is a thick, glossy paper, and this is a thinner, glossy paper that they're using. So whenever you're looking at pages like this with a lot of white, you can see, and not even the white, but also the yellow right here, art from the opposite page bleed through. And let me just give you a couple more examples here, comparison. All right, so for this comparison, I have to hold this down a little bit so you can see. Maybe this was a bad choice, but you can see a little bit of the art bleed through on the white there, a little bit on the blue, and not so much here because, again, different paper stock. You can obviously see how much thicker the paper is, but it's also due to the different binding, too. It's not just the paper stock, but also the bind of the books. Also wanted to show the differences in the letter pages and I mean, this, you can see some of the art bleed through here. Not, honestly, I, I've seen worse, and I know, you know, that <laughs> doesn't mean much because I know it bothers some people and it doesn't bother others. But I do like to point out everything that I can find. Uh, yes, so some of the panels you can see. Uh, but I mainly wanted to focus on the way that the books lay over. This one's laying over fine. This one's still trying to shut on me. And it's an old-ass book. It's one of the... I mean, it's one of the earliest Omnis. Um, 2007, like I said. Now, of course, the other big thing I wanted to do was... Look at the different extras in the back. Alright, so after the introductions and the essays by Blake Bell and John B. Cook... Um, things are a little bit different. Yeah, you go to the... Uh, this is the Spider-Man lexicon right here. And over here, we go immediately to some different pencils by Steve Ditko. 
the unused Spider-Man's debut right there, Amazing Fantasy 15. And yeah, the, the extras are just different. There's a lot more extras in the newer printing than the original printing. And I just want to remind people, I don't have the second, third, maybe even fourth printing of the book. So I don't know if those had all this extra, all these extra extras. Yeah, but that's it. I mean, you have the Marvel Tales and then you get to the very end which is the biographies, which I don't think they do anymore in Omnis, if I'm not mistaken. But all this is extras in this book. I mean, that is a huge chunk of extras that are not collected in the first printing. Yeah, because this is issue 38. It's the last issue collected in here. After issue 38, you get the letter pages right here. And then you immediately jump to the extras, which is this is where they put the lexicon. Very cool. In the original printing, you go to the essay by Arlen Schumer. So it's even missing the Stan Lee intro there. Yeah. So, holy crap. That's a lot more extras than my original printing. Damn it! I wanted to keep my original printing because it's so big. and if, Well, I may keep it anyway. It says, holds a special place in my heart. It was the one book that I was like, uh, okay, I'll collect X-Men Omnis and a Spider-Man Omni. And then I went down that rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have the second and third printing of the books uh, of this omnibus because I'd like to know if all these extras are in those printings. So they added a crap ton of extras. I can imagine them adding these things right here. Not so much the Epic Collections, though, or the Mighty Marvel Masterworks. I believe these are brand new to the, the this particular omnibus for the first time. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if this is the reprint you have been waiting for. You have all the other amazing Spider-Man Omnis, and this is the one that was missing from your collection. Uh, if you previously owned it, if you're one of those people that like to get the latest printing of these Omnis. I would love to know all those comments down below. If you have any more questions, leave your questions down below. Everyone, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications if you haven't yet. That all helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. And more importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.